champion right here, baby. <sighs> That was a fucking wild. long summer. Yeah. You know, 100 days is. It's exhausting. crazy. I'm here with Jackson Mickey. And I'm here with Champion Casey. Champion of BB21, baby. Number one spot. Hey, man. Uh, welcome to the winner's circle. Thank for you. For real. It's, hey, uh, it's good, nice. Good, I'm in good, good company. Game. Yes, good man. Company. Man. I, I mean, when we were in Vegas, too, I felt like we really did vibe out. We did. Like, we did. I love your energy. It's and a I mutual feel, bond. It's a, it's a good bond. Yes. Yes. yes I love it. So, and us going through, like, the same experience and being in there, and it's just it's just been so wild. But it is. It's I've, uh, I've, very we, surreal. Yes. It's so surreal. Like, I still to this day, it's still way over my head. Over my head. I'm like, Damn, I was on Big Brother. Oh shit, I won Big Brother. So it's gonna be yeah. with you for a while. You I know. Like, it's like, oh shit, I just saw Casey hosting a veto comp, <laughs> and, and I ended up winning Big Brother right. 16 weeks later. It's, it's wild. Damn. It's wild. Well, welcome to the BB family. Welcome thank to the uh, the winner circle. Yeah, thank you. Um, and me. thank you for having. Um, thank you for bringing, letting us have time with you. Absolutely. You know, yeah, at yeah. your at your place. Okay. Th yep. Thank you for letting us come over. <laughs> Y'all so, always welcome. Y'all always welcome. <laughs> um, okay, so I just gotta. You know, a couple questions. Okay. What What is the importance of social strategy in Big Brother and in life, would you say? So, your social game in Big Brother is what will carry you through to the end, honestly. Um, if you have a bad social game, you've got to be really good at competitions. Right. And on day 44, my social game got blown up. <laughs> so, I had to get really good at competitions. Um, but in life, you want to do the best you can to be the best you can. Yeah. Uh, you want to have good relationships with as many individuals as possible, and you don't. Um, you know, you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot and sort of outcast yourself. And, um, you know, I have a very um, interesting personality that some people either job with or they yeah. don't. So it's it's tricky, but I am who I am. So it's kind of, uh, you know, I do the best to be the best I can, but at the end of the day, you'll never please everyone. Yeah. Um, you'll always have people that dislike you for one thing or another, and I would rather have people dislike me for being me um, than dislike me for being fake. Right. Um, you know, it, it, I'd rather be myself and be disliked than be authentic. Right. Heck yeah. No, I hear you. What was your strategy before going in the house? Were you like, I'm going to like really incorporate my social so game? Or were you just like, I what was I thought I was going to be viewed as a physical threat yeah. from the get-go and the social threat. And then I saw Jack. Yeah. So I was like, okay. <laughs> Now my goal is to paint targets on as many people as possible so that I'm never number one. Right. I wanted Jack to be the biggest target. I wanted Christy to be the biggest target. Yeah. I wanted Tommy to be the biggest target. Just fuel egos, fuel loud personas and voices. Nick, for example. All people I was working with because if the other side of the house were to get power, I don't want them to look at me as number one. Right. I might be number two, but that's fine. It's like, you know, when Jack got evicted, I was up there against Jack, but because I wasn't the number one target, yeah. Jack went home. Um, so I always tried to make sure that there was a bigger fish in the pond rather than myself. Yeah, that's an interesting look at it. Like your, you know, the strategy of going into it, like you knew ahead of time, like, okay, I'm aware that I look like a competitor right. and then people are gonna have their first impressions and think, oh, you know, this, 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 he's a, he's a target, we need to get him out. And then you're like, you know, I know how people are probably gonna, you know, assume and it, how, you know, look at, yeah, perceive me. And then you're like, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna uh, make them look like a bigger target, them a bigger target, yeah. and which is smart. It's awesome. Right. I mean, that's a social strategy in itself. It's like, you are aware of yourself. You are aware, and then you were aware of your surroundings and other people that you were aware, like, like in a in a house with, and right. you're like, this is what I'm gonna do. I was always so that's trying intrigued. to, that's, you know, that's Jack was a very loud personality. Yeah. Um, so I was always trying to make Jack more Jack. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, always trying yeah. to make Christy more <laughs> Christy. You know what I'm saying? I was always trying to sort of fuel their fire so their flames would be bigger than mine, if that yeah. makes sense. But it was nice because when our blow up happened, I was finally able to be myself and yeah. play the game that I wanted to play. I was able to socially become me again because the first 44 days I wasn't allowing myself to yeah. be myself. Yeah. I was being whatever you know Jack was or whatever Christy was trying to build them up. I wasn't letting myself compete unless I needed to uh, take it off. Only won the veto when I had to. Camp yeah. director only needed it because I didn't want to go home. Uh, but then when I was on my own, I didn't have a choice, so I was finally able to play the Big Brother yeah. game that I wanted to play. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. I know before, like before the house, you were like in sales, right? Yeah. Like, it, like how long were you doing sales? So for? I was a server and a bartender. Um, I did oh, landscaping awesome. and things like that. I actually had to deny a medical sales job um, mm -hmm. because right when I moved out here, I had it offered to me. Right. But I didn't want to take on this gig if I was potentially right. going to be leaving in a few months. I didn't feel like it was respectful for them to take their time and effort and 
faith in me right. to then just bail out. Um, but you know, Big Brother's a sales game. Yes, it really is. Yes. It's uh, you're selling yourself to 15 strangers that you've never met, yeah. all different personalities, and you got to make them buy you. So yeah, that's no, that I totally agree. What would you say was like some of the stuff like in your sales and like in your in that that career, and then how did some of those like uh like those social strategies yeah. help you into the, so, like a uh, big brother? Like Cliff said, and I said it when I evicted him was you've got to be able to adapt. Yeah. Um, you've got to be able to, you know, be quiet when you need to be, you got to be able to pump the gas when you need to, you got to be able to pull it back. You've got to be Huge. aggressive when you need to. I granted I'm more aggressive than I yeah. should have been sometimes. <laughs> um, but you know, if, if people are lying, you got to lie better than them. Mm -hmm. If people are going back on deals, you got to go back on more deals than them. You've got right. to do whatever you can to adapt your environment to survive. It's survival of the fittest. Right. Um, and you just, got to play harder and be smarter. No, that's awesome. Yeah, you were very strategic. I mean, you're so right. Like I always say too, um, your social game, social game is like, if I need to keep my mouth shut, I need to keep my mouth shut. It's like yeah. everything you do is on purpose. If right. I need to, you know, keep information, certain information in my head, then let that be. And internalize If it. I need to yeah. say it, then I need to say it. If I need yeah. to, Zip it, zip it, zip you know? It. So there's everything a gap got on purpose. Of me yeah. saying, I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. I'm zipping. Yes, I'm and like, that's huge. And that's yeah. so huge. Because it's so strategic and it's like, okay, I can put this information out there or I can keep it to myself or I can use it later, or I can do this. Know yourself, aware, and then you're. And you know, you maybe I should have kept some things to myself instead of Jack. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> that, that one kind of bit me in the ass, but it's all right. It's all right. You know, it was honestly the best thing to happen to my game. Yeah. It really was. Yeah. No, you get it, man. You get it. That's so awesome. What is your perspective on social game and how do you think about social strategy? How do you strategize? Um, essentially it was all about looking long term mm -hmm. and Zingbot got me for it, but it's yeah. chess, not checkers. You yeah. can't make it's irrational chess, decisions. Not checkers. It's chess, not that? checkers. It is. Um, you know, some people in the house were saying that I was wasting HOHs. Um, by evicting sis and by evicting Jess, mm -hmm. but it was all part of my strategy. My goal was to keep targets in the house, but disarm them as much as possible. And once everyone around them was gone, they would get taken out next. Yeah. And then that's exactly what happened. Sis was with Nick. Sis was with Tommy. Sis was with Holly. Sis was with Christy. Um, Sis was not with me. Yeah. I would have been sixth out of all of those people. I was at the very bottom of the list and I needed to be at the top of the list. I didn't want to leave her in the house because if it came down to me and Sis, I didn't want Holly to even have a choice. I wanted right. her to pick me. Um, you know, same thing with Jess. She was going to pick Christy over me at some point. Might not have been going after me that week, but right. eventually I know that I was not her number one. Right. She would have picked Holly over me. She always emphasized that she wanted to get guys out of the house. So for me, it was all about weakening Christy, weakening Tommy, weakening the other people that could potentially beat me in this game and then have them taken out right before the very end, if that makes sense. Wow, yeah, no, it does make sense. Social strategist right here, guys. Because if, if Are you listening and taking notes, okay? Because if those three, Christy, Nick, or Tommy, went out too soon, then I'm a sitting duck. Right. And then they're gonna pick me off. So I had to keep them in there just long enough to where I could then go into fifth, fourth, third, second, right. and be in those two chairs. That's awesome. That's great, that's great. You know, it you, yeah, it it's, it's a lot. It's a, it's a lot, <laughs> and it's all on the fly, too. You yes. don't have a crystal ball. You never know yes. if you're gonna get HOH again. You never yes. know what the veto comp will be. You don't know know but um high risk high reward I no. like to gamble so it's just that's awesome it. that is it. awesome okay so were you always confident in social or did you have social anxiety growing up how did you develop your social mastery so were you always like super no I got, I, got, I got bullied a lot as a little kid um i was uh very overweight and i actually really of, yeah so i kind of grew up with a chip on my shoulder mm. um and a lot of it is where my aggressiveness comes yeah. from is because i eventually got to the point where i was like i'm not going to let this happened. Yeah. I'm not going to let people talk at me and push me around and do these things. I'm going to be my own man. And if you want something in life, you have to take it. Yeah. No one is going to ride in on a, a white horse. There's no knight in shining yes. armor coming to save you. You have to make the changes in your life if you're unhappy and get it done. Right. It's not going to be handed to you on a platter. Um, that was one of the things that frustrated me with Cliff's deals at the end was he was setting everything up to just be handed a final two seat. Yeah. Yeah. That ain't how life works. That ain't how this game is working. I'm, I, Cliff. If, if I want that chair, I have to take it. Yeah. No one's going to give it to me. I've got to yeah. go out and take it. And especially being on my own and next to Holly, I was not going to let anyone take it away from me. Right. Right. No, then that, I mean, that tells a lie. I mean, just like you growing up and how it just made you so like, 
I'm going to get what I want. You got a job to I, do. Yeah, you got a job to do. You got one job to do. So. Yeah, you got to get it done. <laughs> I, I know. I, so you weren't always like social. I mean, you were so no, like outgoing, very, confident. You were just it was, very I had to, to yourself. Force it. I had to force it. Yeah. Um, because, and also a lot of that came with, you know, working in restaurants. Um, you ha- you were constantly meeting new people and you want to boost that check as much yeah. as possible. Yeah. That people tip off of their check amounts, not right. off the service. Right. So you have to come across in a way where you don't look like you're trying to upsell them. Yep. But at the same time, if you know, y'all two sit down and, and have dinner with a glass of wine, why not make it a bottle? Yeah. Or two bottles. Yeah. Why, you know, get a sirloin if I can sell you on a fillet, you know what I mean? So it's right. like try and always get the most out of it. Was that, that the turning sense. point for you? Kind of like what's like social and being confident and really just having to put it into in, into action, like being a right. server. It's like, okay, in order for me, for them to pay well, I need to do this, this, this. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta be whatever your customer wants you to be. Yeah. In the house, you have to be whatever people want you to be. Right. Granted, in that house, it is not like real life. It will drive you insane. It brings out the best and worst and you have this plan going into it and then it just gets blown up right when you walk right. through the door. But, you know, like Camp Director, for example, getting those votes on a social level, but at the same time making it seem like I didn't want it. Yeah. It was hard. It was tricky because if you push for something in Big Brother, if you want something to happen really bad, it's going to sketch people out. It's going to make people paranoid. It's going to raise red flags. Why does he want this so bad? What is he doing? What's his real motive here? So you have to, if you don't want it, if you want it, you got to make it seem like you don't want it. You know what I mean? Right. It's, it's bass accurate. It it. (laughs) It is. No. Yeah. I mean, and you say like, you know, with big brother, yeah, it's, it's not, it's, I feel like it's kind of similar to like real life because you people go through ups and downs in life. You got to adapt. You got to do different things. You got to, you know, you're dependent on like social interactions in order to get certain things, just right. like in real life in Big Brother. But there's so many things in Big Brother where it's like, it's it's just, it's not the same as like, it's not at you all. know, there's so many random points of how it's not the same in real life, but it's still a game where it's like, you're still dealing with human beings and emotions. Right. And, and, you know, you never know if people are lying to you. You never know yeah. if people are being honest. You never know what they want out of you. You right. never know if someone's your friend or if they just want you because yep. you have a key around your neck right. you know what i mean it's it's the like wild, in real life literally, <laughs> right <laughs> literally you know? and like and, and you know coming out of this it's like okay i hadn't talked to you in five years yeah. what are you doing oh no me? yeah I, that I, part I I, we're still playing big brother now yeah we're now we're, we're, we're playing still, real life big yes brother. Just, yeah with a paycheck that's it <laughs> yes it's wild it is it wild. never stops big brother is a game of life oh much, it, it so. really is it really is do you think like i mean because I think because I started serving before I went into the house too. I was a, I worked at a sushi restaurant and I felt like I should have been doing that a long time ago because you really do learn the skills of like learning to interact with people, learning how to like really get them, you know, to do something that, right. you know, you would like them to do or get or buy or, right. and it's all about the interaction that you have with them. Right. You feel like that really helped it you? It did. But now granted, if someone, you know, is mean to me at a table or is talking down to me or if they annoy me. I keep my mouth shut and they're gone in an hour or two. Right, right. And this house is yep, 168 true. That's hours true. in a week and you spend every single one of them with these people. You live with them. So it's like eventually, you know, you want to be pleasing to everyone, but you're going to snap. Yeah. You're going to have arguments. Yeah. You're going to have blows. You're going to fight over yep. little stuff. People not washing the toothpaste out of the sink. People yep. leaving their whiskers. People not putting. <laughs> people. I never once put my lips on a milk carton. But apparently the whole world was so pissed ah, that's that I drank so out of the garden because I, I didn't want to get a whole glass. Like right. little stuff that annoys people. It right. So it's big not brother, a table. big brother knows what they're doing. They, they know do. what they're, they're doing. They're good at their job. It's oh. how it's been going for twenty one years. <laughs> yes. They're good at it. So yeah, like you know, I was uh, like you said, you know, you you were overweight and you were bullied. Yeah, what are what's some advice that you can give? Honestly, like you have a story to tell. Like, yeah, what so, is there someone that? Um, like, you that's can one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to come out to LA and go into the fitness industry is to help those people that feel like they yes. don't have anyone to help them. Um, don't ever feel like you are on your own. I know that I personally like to do things on my own, and I don't like receiving help from people. But yeah. at the same time, that's not healthy. Um, you have to be able to recognize that internalizing everything and keeping it bottled in isn't healthy. Go talk to people, go find some help, go do whatever you need to. So you don't have to fight a battle on your own. Um, and look for help. It's, it's okay to ask for help. And that's a thing that I'm still working on every single day. Um, and you will see that a lot of the things that I'm getting grilled for online are because I internalize a lot. I don't like talking about problems. I don't like talking about emotions. Yeah. And you know, I take it out on the wrong people, the people I love most. I need to be more affectionate. I need to be sweeter. I need to be kinder. I need to show these feelings more. Yeah. Um, and you know, that's what life and big brother will show you about yourself. But to anybody out there, just don't 
ever feel like you're alone. Yeah. You're not. There's a lot of people in this world and a lot of them want to love you. That's crazy. And, I, and it, it explains a lot in like how you are today, you know, because I mean, I feel like, you know, I'm saying I don't like to ask for help. I like it was always like I kept all my feelings to myself. I didn't like to when people feel sorry for me. I just like to, yeah. you know, and so it's like you just want to keep it all within yourself. And then, but as you get older and you start you start learning, you're like, you know what? I, you do need to talk about it. It's OK to talk about it, yeah. because once you just you're just all cooped up in yourself and you're just like it comes off a whole certain way and it's not you don't need it comes out hard. it's yeah. going to come out yeah. eventually yeah. And, whether yeah. you want it to or not yeah you know and it, it, you think it's a weakness by talking about it in a healthy way but and it's not it's, it's not it's actually going to cripple you if yeah. you don't you know yeah. and um you know it's going to be situations where it's like you know holly's crying i should be more comforting to her rather than just shutting down yeah you know what i mean and i'm, I'm learning that about myself yeah. I'm far of from course perfect, but of it's, course it's situations like that where it's like okay you can be more sensitive it's okay yeah. to have a soft side yeah and i don't usually have the yeah. soft side all that much yeah you know, so. no it's okay that's right, so exactly. awesome. like you're well you're how old are you 23 24? 24 a week before going to that's crazy like you're still lear like you're still learning and growing like i remember i was learning so much at like that age too and just like learning about myself so that's everyone on this er single this planet every single human being is learning some no one's perfect they go through through crazy things we just happen to be Under like filmed 24 7. yeah all of our imperfections you know, are it's blasted crazy. blasted on online and social media you know if you know you do this show 10 years ago coming out of it ain't nearly as oh, bad. oh coming yeah out not of even here close. now is it is brutal yes. online yeah uh, but at the end of the day you know i I'm still taking up real estate in people's heads. If they don't like me, that's okay. Everyone has an opinion. Yep. But, you know, I, I'm not going to sit there and, and go back and forth with people or contest yeah. it. It's, it is what it is. You're I'm an amazing, all. great person. And we want people to know that and understand because I told you, I, I, honest, I was honest oh, with I you. I was like, man, she Mickey, I wasn't Vegas. really a big fan, man. I really wasn't. And then meeting you when I like I you know I saw you in the house I could feel that I, I said what you know after came out I was like everyone's vibes are so cool then I you know we met in Vegas and we were hanging out and I'm like wait what like you are amazing you we vibed yeah. out really well we did. you were so genuine and you were a great human being and it's no one's perfect far from it far I'm from far it far from perfect and so like we vibed out really well we did we, we did. did. And, and I was uh, like, I love this kid. And like, how do people see, you know, and I, I get it. It's like the edits and then people see you this way. And I'm like, it, right. it's just, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, and you know, it, it's unfortunate because it's like, you know, people think that I was fat shaming Jess, right. you know, talking about a Jessica sized portion of eggs. But what they don't see is that for the first couple of weeks, I don't know if it was the first couple of weeks, but for a while there, she was making these egg scrambles with like two or three dozen eggs, like right. make for the whole house. But then no one would eat them. And then they would just get thrown away. And I was always the one trying to cook for people and things like that. And we were running out of eggs. So Jack was like, do we have a lot of eggs? I was like, not a Jessica size portion of eggs right. to make a massive oh egg gosh, scramble. And people yeah. take it as yeah. running with it like that. Um, another thing that is being contested is that I said, Jessica, go back to Mexico and that she's Latin American. That was our code word in the house for yeah. the sequester hotel yeah. that we were in because we don't talk about that yeah um you know so it's like people take these things and yes. some feeders are sticking up for it they're like no he's talking about you know yep. x hotel that they were all sequestered in but then the others like we have clips of him saying jessica go back to go back to mexico like that's racist that's so bad and we should have thought in the house like yeah talking about mexico that's probably not a good look yeah but we never put two and two together yeah I, I really didn't. I didn't look at it that way. I didn't mean it that way. But it, you know, people have their opinions, and they're going to take it and run with run it. Run with it. Um, oh, and you know, and, and there were some things that were said um, that really frustrated me with David. Yeah. Um, I had a cousin who died of Downs and autism when she was 17. She had leukemia three times, um, and she said a couple words about mental disability, mm -hmm. the R word in particular, and that hits home with me. Mm -hmm. And then when he came back. He had go, he's going through the name, the Beth from Montana. That conversation goes, oh, yeah, you're that guy from Nashville that read some book and wanted to do something different. But he has no idea that the past year and a half of my life were the hardest year and a half yeah. of my entire life ever. Um, I was in a bad place. I was dealing with a lot of different things. I told him my car two weeks before coming out here, medical issues, things like that, that he didn't know. Yeah. So when he started saying those couple words, I got so mad. Yeah. I got so mad. And I said something in the heat of the moment that I shouldn't have, that I would never yeah. actually do, yeah. that had nothing to do with the color of his skin. It was just an angry emotion yeah. about the things that were piling up. 
but I have no idea if anyone ever saw those things mm. or saw the other things that were said. You know, and I take full responsibility for the things that I've said and done in that house because I know my wrongs. Yeah. But at the same time, there are some things that I want other people to know, especially the fat shaming and yeah. go back to of Mexico. Of course, of course. Because those are two that are being, you know, held over my head, but are taken so far out of context and yeah. so far from the truth that it's like, it's, I don't even it's know crazy. How to go about, yeah, I don't even and know that's how to why, fix it. I mean, just like when people watch, they, they don't understand there's so many different perspectives. Like, there's not just one thing that's happening. There's this happened because there's something else or something else right. that. You know, that may or may not be seen. Yeah. The feeds yes. might not be in that room at the exactly. time. Exactly. So it's like, exactly. you know, they only have four cameras exactly. on two different, I think. Uh, I, they have four like, different cameras. Four different cameras. But like, like there might have been a conversation between two people. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. you have people in three or four different rooms and two people's conversations oh, yeah. might not be heard. Right. You know, so it's like, yes, the feeds show everything, but there are still things that get missed. Right. You know what I mean? So oh, yeah. I mean, it's huge. I mean, it's, I think it's just a life, life lesson, too. It's like people, you, you never know what someone's going through. You never know what the person, there's so many different perspectives. Right. You, it's like, take, 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 you know, pump the brakes, step back, and kind of just think that there's so many different perspectives. You never know what someone's going through. Right. So keep your mouth shut if you can't say anything nice at all because you don't know this individual. Right. There's so many people that don't know you. Once I they meet you, they meet you. It's like you're you're an amazing person. I appreciate. So it's like you you never know and don't. It, it just it really makes my blood boil when people are just so mean to someone they have never even freaking met. Oh man, the DMs, the texts. Apparently, I, my phone number got uh, leaked for a little while. I, I was getting oh, annihilated, annihilated. But it's honestly, it, it really doesn't bother me because I said it on the show. I don't know if it got edited. I haven't gotten that far. But my whole life, a lot of people do not like me. But a majority of those people have never had a conversation with me. Yeah. They've never given me a chance, and yeah. that's okay. You know, In college especially, people always looked at me as like your typical Brad Chatter Thad kind of guy yeah. that, you know, did your stereotypical kind of douchey things. You know, yeah. Zingba called me a pompous douchebag. And yeah. I know that I do those things, but at the same time, I'm also not only that right. type of person. You know what right. I mean? There's other elements to it. Yeah. You know, I just appreciate you giving me a chance. And of like, course. I literally dude. said, I was like, dude, thank you for having just a conversation with no, me. No, of course. Thank you. Because I looked up to you so much your oh, season. And I was like, so much, she, she ain't going to like me. I mean, nah, dude. Oh, what do you even mean? I was like, Come she gave on. me a chance. She gave me yeah, a chance. Yeah, I did give you a chance. I, did. So, I was like, I, I'm not a big fan, but I you know. know. And I told you, and I, you know, but I, I, I love you. You're my yeah, family. And I, I and I, I respect you. I really do. And I'm so proud of you. Like, of you, you know, coming out and just handling the things that you're handling. And I get when people, like, you know, but when they probably look at you, they're probably like, oh my gosh, this kid is like mean or, you know, because it's like you don't, it seems like you don't wear your, you know, your emotions, your feelings on your sleeve. Like, right. you you know, you just keep everything within. So people just look at you like he's an it asshole. It took 86 days though. And then I finally yeah. did lose it. And yeah. people said that those were fake tears about Tommy, which yeah. is hilarious. Uh, trust me, I bottle in my emotions. I'm not fixing to ball my yeah. eyes out on national television. Yeah, for, yeah. Uh, someone who's already evicted. Yeah. And to Holly. Yeah. What good does that do me? Yeah. It gets, no, it gets hard it gets in there. It gets nowhere, but it, it was hard. It, uh, it takes a toll on you. It really does. It brings out the best and worst and everything in between. Awesome. What, what do you say is the, some of the lessons that you learned in the Big Brother house that you're going to be taking with you like to the real life? Uh, definitely about the you know my emotions. Having yeah. a better uh, grip on those and being more in tune with myself and being more sensitive, being more caring, being more open-minded vulnerable to things. Being more vulnerable, yeah. 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 Um, being more gentle and softer and, and not being so aggressive yeah. you know what i mean i'm an intense person i do everything a thousand miles an hour if i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do yeah. it um but you know at the same time you don't always have to you know go full speed you yeah can, you can kind of tiptoe through some things every once in a while it's all right to take a break you know? that's a great lesson so, i mean i'm excited for you too because I, I honestly you have a story that people would love to hear and it'll give them so much value you know right so um yeah i think it's amazing I thank you so it. much hey, thank you thank you really so do. much I'd, uh, it's been fun yeah i'm so glad it's over yeah dude it's been a long oh, it's summer. not over you're still no, like no, 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 I, I, it's fine but at least i'm out of the house that yeah. chapter is closed on to the next it's crazy it's crazy wow. in there it's very surreal like isn't it different like like before like while watching it and then being in it and now no, Casey's sitting on my no, couch. No, no. Like, how <laughs> no, did life get like this? Isn't it crazy? It's no crazy. one will ever understand. No Never, one will ever, ever understand. I have so much more respect for those that were on the seasons before me. Yeah. Because I truly never knew. I thought, I knew I would do well with Big Brother. Um, I knew I could win. Yeah. But I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Yeah. Now, like Bailey, for example, you know, with blood coming out of her mouth yeah. on day 30, I'm like, 
What is wrong yeah, with yeah. And then I get in there on day three, I'm blood boiling just yeah. so much. I'm like, now I get yeah. it. You know what I mean? Or people, you know, falling in love in two weeks. I'm like, wow. that's 14 days. Yeah. Like, that, that doesn't make sense. But, you know, I did the math. Her and I spent over two years of time together. Yep. You know what I mean? It's wild. If you spent two hours a day, every day, uninterrupted, yep. for 800 days. It's equivalent to... It's equivalent to 16 hours yes. a day for 100 days. And that's if we get eight hours of sleep. Yeah. And we don't get eight hours of sleep yeah. every night. So no, that's it's, true. Uh, it's wild. It, it really is. But, you know, I got I got a victory out of it. I got a win. And I got a holly. And that's about all oh, I get. Uh, you guys for. are amazing. She's a great girl. Hold on tight to her. Oh, I ain't letting go. <laughs> no. no, you guys are awesome. I appreciate your time, man. Mm -hmm. If you ever need anything, don't hesitate to hit me up. You oh, you know. Tell, well. I've been telling everyone just because... Again, like I care about you guys so much, and I like talking to all you guys, and it's just it brings me back to how I was feeling in there, at, like coming out. It's crazy. It's so surreal. It's so mentally like draining and so much, and but you guys, I have no doubt you guys are gonna get through it. You know, the yeah. only way through is through. You know, just take it one day yeah. at a time. Try to you know get away from. All so in my mind, I'm just a twenty four year old bartender from Nashville. Yeah. Now. I'm yeah. It's, I, it's just, it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. And I never even came out to LA to be famous or to be on TV or to yeah. get verified on Instagram or social media. I, if you look back on yep. those, I don't care. Yeah. Um, I like to play in the shadows in real life, but here yeah. I am in the spotlight. Yeah, here Whether you I'm are. Right. So, this is your life now. So get used it. to it, damn so, it. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm on the horse going after a thing. And, yeah. Uh, it'll be good. That's it'll be good. awesome. Take it one day at a time. That's awesome. What, where, are you, where are you going from here? Like, what are, you, what are some dreams and uh, aspirations that you have? So, like um, working on getting certified as a personal trainer. Um, I'm going to go back to Nashville, see the folks, see my buddies, go to uh, Knoxville, see some old college friends, see how my balls That's are so doing. I know you're so excited. I'm so excited. I know you're so excited. So excited to go back to Nashville. Um, I'm so excited to go back to Knoxville and see the Vols play uh, Georgia, even though they're probably going to get stomped. <laughs> but just see some people that I haven't seen in a while go down to Mississippi, see all my family. My whole family's from Mississippi. Um, okay. So go and see them and then get to it. You know, I got, a, I got a platform to do a lot of things that I've always wanted to and didn't know how to go about doing it. So yes. it's time to... Uh, Get it done. Awesome. Got a job to do. Awesome. You got a job to do, man. You got a job to do. Let's see I it. have no doubt that you're going to get it done, too. We're going to try. So we're you're gonna staying try. out here, right, in LA? Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. ma'am. Yeah, I cool. live in Los Angeles. I'm going to be here for a while. Okay. No, no cool. intentions of moving back to the South for a little bit. So. That's awesome. That's well, I'm excited out. for you, man. I'm so excited thank for you. you. I, really I really am. appreciate it. Thank so, you for this time. It's no, awesome. yeah, no, thank you. Thank yeah. you. And, Welcome uh, to the family. It, it's an interesting family. Yeah, interesting family. The functional, what is the functioning? The yeah. functioning dysfunctionals. Yep, that's us to a T. Yes. Big Brother 21 especially. That is awesome. <sighs> would you do it again? Or? Perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I really would. They asked me right when I came out. I was like, fuck no, no, no. I would. Give me I would. time. I would. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I was like, you know, if I could do it once, I could do it twice. Yeah. Um, I don't know how it would go, but yeah. I'll try it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll definitely go back in there. If we go back in final two or what? We can do a final three too, Holly. Yeah, All right, final three. Me. Down? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I, I, we would always make jokes. Maybe I can bring, bring Tyler. And right, that right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, one against two. Just don't break the final four. Deal. Yeah, like yeah. Final four deal. That doesn't play over too well. I don't want to have to make a lie up about anybody and do that, that again. That is so funny. No, oh, that's man. awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you, Casey. Thank you so much, man. Much love. Always. Always. You're amazing, man. Thank you so much. <sighs> is there anything else you want to say to... To the world. I don't know if Big Brother's gonna have a 22nd season, but if they do, <laughs> apply for it. Yeah, that's a, that's a apply hell of a show. <laughs>
had 45 minutes until the end of the casting call. Wow. I looked it up on Uber because I didn't have a car out here. Right. I just sold my truck back home. $6.50 Uber. I'm like, all right, screw it. Why not? Let's go. Literally, in what I was wearing, Funny. jeans, boots, and the t shirt, because I've always worn that. And even in California, when yeah. I go out, like, I'm not going to change for anything. Right. Um, I, next thing you know, here I am in Maddie.